What happened to Saito Berahino? Well, now he plays for Belgian club Zuete Weragun. I think I pronounced that properly. But how did he get here? Like, what happened? Well, we have to go all the way back to September 2013. I read this really good article on Birmingham Live. And um, what it says is that in September 2013, Berahino came off the bench to score the winner against Manchester United at Old Trafford. This was massive because West Brom hadn't won at Old Trafford in like 35 years, so it was a massive deal. And that same season, he went on to score 14 league goals, which is extremely impressive for pretty much a youth player. Um, uh, but things went downhill from there. He got a bid from Tottenham uh, during that summer, um, and West Brom turned that offer from Tottenham down twice. I'm not really sure what the implications were for that. I think Tottenham came in with really low bids, so they were just rejected outright. But at the same time, I think West Brom didn't want to sell Berahino, at least not that summer. They wanted to keep it for at least one, maybe two more years and then sell him or something like that. And Berahino took this pretty hard. I think the following season, he... I don't know, I think he was left out of the squad because... Pulis was just like he wasn't in the right frame of mind, which is understandable. But he never really got into this team after that. He was always just like on the bench, you know, never really, you know, making the starting squad. I think there's even troubles with him in training, like he wasn't training properly, which is really odd. Um, and yeah, like things just never really recovered from that. Since then, um, you know, I think he was in West Brom's book for like at least another year and then he got sold to Stoke City after that. Um, and yeah, he's had a whole list of troubles. You know, he's, um, you know, he's had failed drug tests. He got relegated with Stoke. He got convicted for drink driving. Just a whole list of just terrible offenses. Um, and yeah, I have to agree with Tony Pillars on this one because I don't think he wanted... Um, Berahino to leave as well and I think he had a big part to play in him not going to Tottenham because with young players you kind of want to protect them you don't want them to be making these big moves at such a young age because it can actually halt their career you know just hang on a bit you know just stay at West Brom for like one or two more years develop a bit more and then move on when you're finally ready you know after one good season you know there's no telling like if you'll be able to replicate that again but if you stay at West Brom it's more, it's more likely you'll do that because you're going to get way more game time and more chances to shine. And yeah, that's pretty much the story of Berahino. You know, he stayed on Stoke City's books for, I think, well, a while now, like three to four years, I think. And then his contract ran down and then he finally went to Zuete Raragun. Um, But man, it's no joke being a young player. Like, you, you really have to stay focused, like, pretty much 24-7. Once you lose that focus, you know, there's the um you know there's there's a chance that you won't get it back. And that's exactly what's happened with Berahino. It's happened with countless other players as well. Um I can't think of any names right now, but it definitely happens a lot and it just goes to show, you know, you um you know, you, you you've gotta you, you've gotta really be on it uh when you're playing professional football. Alright, that's about it.